what if you could make anything go viral with zero dollars in marketing budget? And I mean viral. I'm talking CNBC trending on the front page of Reddit. Every single blog is blogging about you. You get the gist. Here's how. Now, to understand this method, there's a particular story that I need to shed light on. And this story comes from a certain resource, which I'll showcase towards the end of the video itself. But it goes as follows. It starts with two individuals. One individual is a person that currently runs a charity and he's looking to crowdfund it by starting a Kickstarter project. The problem with this individual is that he has very little marketing understanding, let alone online marketing, right? He doesn't know how to drive traffic to web pages. He doesn't know how to convert this traffic. He doesn't understand how the news works. He doesn't understand what virality is, etc. But he has a friend and his friend is in the business. He understands marketing very well. He's a marketer by trade and he's in the industry. So the crowdfunding guy goes to the marketer and he's like, this is the case. I basically need to drive traffic to the landing page on Kickstarter in order to get crowdfunders so that we can get some sort of following and some sort of traction. And it's really important to notice that this isn't easy to do, right? The majority of the crowdfunding campaigns out there, if you just go on Kickstarter right now, they don't have a lot of traction. It's just poorly built pages, poorly built copy. They don't really explain their idea really well. They don't really explain what they want to do, etc. This guy had to stand out in some way and the other guy helped him. The plan was the following. The guy with the charity basically had to write a small article and record a brief video about his charity. They would then post this content on a very specific blog. And it's really important that you focus on the word specific because this blog is the spark point for the entire chemical reaction that's bound to come. And this growth hack slash marketing strategy is something that's solved through recursion, which basically means that the bigger problem is solved by solving smaller problems. And the big solution depends upon you being able to solve the smaller problems. It's all, it's all dependent. It's all interrelated. It's all connected. And doing this allows you to turn nothing into something. Hence marketing yourself with zero dollars in ad spend. And so they did it. They wrote a brief article with a small video and they posted it on a specific blog in Brooklyn. Now, the reason as to why they selected this blog is very, very important. They selected it primarily because the Huffington Post typically on a 30 to 40% basis likes to select small articles from them that are well written and likes to create other articles of them in their New York section. And that's exactly what happened. The Huffington Post took their article and then did another article about them in their New York and Los Angeles section. Now, this is super important because by understanding the quote unquote symbiotic relationship between this party right here and the bigger party, which in this case is the Huffington Post, they were able to get themselves from point A to point B. Point A being a small blog with 10 to 20,000 monthly visitors and then point B being the Huffington Post. It's quite the jump. Being able to do this with ad spend, being able to do this normally would cost you anywhere from five to six figures. They were able to do it with zero dollars in ad spend just by understanding that the Huffington Post typically likes to look at this blog and takes articles from them as inspiration for other articles on the Huffington Post. And it makes perfect sense because these bigger outlets basically want to ride the wave of whatever's trending. And the amount of time that a news outlet has to report on something is very, very slim. And a perfect example of this is the following. Mark Zuckerberg recently announced the metaverse. Everything was about the metaverse. The, the given issues that they're facing with regards to censorship, etc., and the metaverse as a whole. So as a, as a technological advancement, this was the talk of the town for approximately a week, but then that's it. Nobody's talking about it anymore, at least not to the extent to which it was spoken about before the time period of relevancy and of trend and of hype of where you actually type a certain topic into Google trends. And you see that there's a lot of search volume for it right now. There's like a big hockey stick spike. It's very slim, right? It's three to four days, max five to seven, etc. because people forget our attention spans are very small, right? Something's important now. And then the next moment we're checking our phone for the next big thing. We're always on the search for new information, new dopamine hits, etc. News outlets understand this. And because of this, they have pressure on them to always be on the search for new information. So they have to look for inspiration from smaller blogs, like in this case. And this is exactly what happened. The Huffington Post, the, the reporter, the author from the Huffington Post took the information, wrote a bigger piece about them. And all of a sudden they went from step A to point B. And there's more. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. 
they then did something pretty crazy. So they created an anonymous email, which is pretty easy. You could do this with just by purchasing a fake Gmail or just creating one, just verified via phone, etc. Or you could even do it with a Proton Mail. They created an anonymous email and they pinpointed and targeted a certain reporter from the CBS within the region of Los Angeles. And they sent him a quick email saying, have you checked this out? Check this out. This is crazy, etc." With the article from the Huffington Post. Now, if they would have done this with the article from the blog post itself, the reporter literally wouldn't have cared because it'd be too much of a jump, right? But because they were able to get it from the blog post to the Huffington Post and then send a piece of content from the Huffington Post to the news reporter, the news reporter thought like, yeah, then it's definitely worthwhile. And by doing that, by showing the reporter the right piece of content at the right time, they were able to get a free television piece done from the video content that the guy filmed beforehand, right? All for free in Los Angeles. So all of a sudden, these guys went from A, B, and then to C as well. So they're able to get news coverage, a television piece done about their Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign within a certain region for $0 an announcement. Now, by now, normally this would cost maybe give or take somewhere in the high five figures. You could even say nearing the actual six figures in ad spend and publicist costs, etc. So by understanding again, the relation between point A to point C and how it's all interwoven and how they're all dependent upon each other for inspiration, for new content, etc. And there's a pressure on them to create content that's relevant and trending at the moment by playing into this, they were basically able to cheat the system and manipulate the media. But wait, there's more. They then posted the CBS piece, right? Not the Huffington Post, not the blog post, the actual CBS television piece onto Reddit. And all of a sudden, everybody on Reddit started upvoting it because it is a charity and it does have a certain emotional factor attached to it. Everybody started upvoting it on Reddit and all of a sudden it's trending on the front page of Reddit. Now, if you just took a blog post and you started upvoting it on Reddit, it'd have very little impact. But because CBS, it has the clout and it has the validity, right, of a big news source making it very legit. Everybody's looking into it because they know that CBS wouldn't just cover something that's irrelevant. Whereas a blog, not a lot of credibility. If you just post that on Reddit, everybody would be like, okay, it's probably just some click spam or whatever. But because the CBS posted it and people are basically sharing what the CBS posted on Reddit, this then has the clout, it has the validity, and it has people watching. So this then rises to the top of the trending page, right? Because everybody's upvoting it. And once that happens, because all the other blogs and news articles typically look at Reddit to see what's trending, other blogs and other news articles started basically posting about it. And again, it all comes down to the simple point of blogs competing to get stories first, then news outlets competing to basically report on stuff first, right? And then other individuals like podcasts, etc., competing to get an opinion on something first. Everybody wants to be first. So if you can play into that and just structure it correctly, you can basically get yourself from zero marketing budget to viral. This is what Ryan Holiday calls the media manipulation method in Trust Me, I'm Lying. And by understanding the relations between outlets with blogs, etc., they were basically able to create something from nothing. And by utilizing that, they were basically able to get thousands, right? Hundreds of thousands of impressions with zero in ad spend. Now, again, as I mentioned, doing something like this with Facebook ads would cost you possibly millions. Doing something like this through the PR way as well would possibly cost you within the five to six figures, right? There's a cost associated with having stuff posted or having people cover stuff because they understand that if they do post about it, there will be impressions. So they put a price tag on it. With no ad spend, no publicist, they went from zero to hero. Now, again, this is an excerpt from Trust Me, I'm Lying, which was written a few years ago. Now things have sort of changed. You have a lot of automation come into place. So a different variation of this would basically be the following. Creating a blog post, paying for this blog post with a, a notable outlet out there like Forbes, Entrepreneur, etc., and then posting it on Reddit and trying to get it onto the top of the trending page using, let's say, upvote manipulation, which is another variation of some of the marketing automation that we have today, which is pretty big as well. Reddit does have an upvote problem from a content perspective. If you're a marketer, you could use it. If you're a consumer, you need to be aware of it, but it's definitely a variation that could work. What I really like is the fact that they were able to basically pinpoint a reporter within the news outlet and then contact him using a fake email address just to make it look like it's not associated with the story itself. Because if they contacted the reporter with the charity's email, then the reporter would have gotten back to them and said like, okay, just speak with the partnership person to actually get yourself a sponsorship so that we can create a piece on you. Cause otherwise it's it would cost money. But by creating a fake email 
address and by making the party seem like it's totally disconnected, they were basically able to get free PR, which is pretty important. And that's something that could definitely be tested today. It can be replicated. And I know that this is primarily theory at the given moment, but it's definitely something worth discussing, especially on a channel like this nonetheless. And there's many variations of this happening on a day-to-day -day basis. You just need to look close enough, right? What's a publicity stunt? What's being actually orchestrated? What's What was thought out, etc. Definitely recommend you guys check out the book. I've linked it in the description below. Check out the channel as well for more growth hacks and more marketing tips. And I'll catch you guys on...